Liberal Democrats that will make education in England the main focus of their manifesto launched today by promising an extra £2.5 billion in funding. It would mean that despite rising student numbers, the amount of money spent per pupil would stay the same. Uh, we're joined now by the Liberal Democrat Minister for Schools, David Laws, who uh, sort of led the writing of the Lib Dems manifesto. Mr Laws, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Good to uh, be with you. Your plan then is it's paid for by economic growth over the next few years. How does that work? Well, up to 2017-18, we've set out very detailed plans to meet our spending commitments and to balance the budget. And we published those a couple of days ago. They involve some increases in tax on people on very high earnings, also a small amount of welfare savings and departmental cuts. And then after 2017-18, what we're saying is Unlike the Conservative Party, who want to go on cutting public spending and uh, build, building up a surplus on the current balance, we're actually going to put more money into the public services. We're going to put money in particularly to the NHS and education. And that allows us not just to protect real education funding across the Parliament, uh, but also to put two and a half billion pounds extra into it, which will help in the early years to get investment in high quality teachers. It'll help to keep class sizes down with the increase in the pupil population. And it will help us to do things like having more one-to-one -one tuition to make sure that every single how young you, child can keep up. How do up. you know? So it's, it's that priority okay. after 2017, 18. Thank you. How do you know that the economy is going to continue to grow for the next few years? What happens to your plans if we're suddenly in a recession? Well, these plans are plans that we are committing to, and we believe that the assumptions that we've made are sensible and cautious. Indeed, we've got a, a contingency in our plans for any undershoot in revenues. So we believe that these are deliverable, and we publish them all over the you. weekend. Fairly, been... Sorry to interrupt you, but there's a fairly important word you used there, a contingency if there's some sort of undershoot. In other words, yeah. you're going to have to do something if the economy doesn't, doesn't continue to grow. What is that contingency? Now, what I'm saying is that uh, we are planning to balance the current budget by 2017, 2018. But the plans that we published a couple of days ago don't just uh, balance it to, to zero. There's actually a contingency in there of a number of billion pounds beyond the level that we would need to get at. So we're being extremely prudent and cautious. We published all our figures in much greater detail than all of the other parties a couple of days ago. And to my knowledge, they've survived all of the scrutiny that they've had since then right. Is it in just, a way just, that simply the other parties right. simply haven't. OK, I just need to be, be clear about this. If the economy doesn't continue to grow, if there is a recession, where does the money come from to pay for your education plans? Well, we will make sure that we do deliver on this pledge, and we believe that the, f that the assumptions that we're making are sensible and prudent. But how, you've said They're that, in, but how, same... where does the money come from? If, there, if there's a recession, where does the money come from to pay for education? We will make sure that the decisions that we make in the next parliament enable us to put in that extra money. We have to put forward plans on the most sensible economic but assumptions. Just I'm like, sorry, Mr. Lord, but you're like not telling us. But you're not telling us what is in that plan. You're just saying, well, we'll deal with it. We are. We're, we're putting forward our economic numbers on the most sensible possible forecasts. Actually, prudent forecasts compared with many private sector forecasters. That is exactly so the same as all of the other political parties. If there's a recession, cannot, it's, an unfunded, it's an unfunded we, promise. If there was a, a recession, this is an unfunded promise. No, it's not an unfunded promise. It's fully funded based upon the best economic plans that we can make. This is the same way that every party, and indeed the government, plans for the future. We've got plans as a government going right through into the next few years. Those are based upon the tax and spending and economic assumptions that the Office of Budget Responsibility makes. That is the sensible independent check, and that's the right way for all political okay. parties to make their uh, costings for the future. And actually, unlike the other political parties, yep. we're being very open about all our assumptions on tax and spending and welfare okay. and, and putting that well, right out in the public let's domain. Let's see if you'll be open about this. Are your proposals on education a fundamental red line, a line in the sand for any deal you might do in forming, co forming a coalition for the next government? Yes, look, Nick Clegg, I think, made very clear uh, yesterday in an interview that he gave that we've really thought in incredible detail this time about what our main priorities are, as we always do. We've put literally on the front page of our manifesto the five key priorities that we want to deliver if there is a hung parliament and we have influence in the next parliament. Obviously, that includes 
fairly balancing the budget and raising the personal tax allowance. It also includes the critical investment in the NHS and in education and the measures okay. that we're proposing to green our economy and deal with the challenge you, of climate you've change. Made, you're making this promise on education, but why should voters believe in that after what happened to your signed pledge on scrapping tuition fees, which in effect got torn up? Why should we believe you now? I think they should believe us because if you look at the pledges that we put on the front page of our manifesto in 2010, increasing the personal income tax allowance to £10,000, we've actually gone beyond that even though people said that we couldn't afford it five years ago. The pupil premium, £2.5 billion extra investment in schools on the front page of our last manifesto, we've delivered that. Sorting out the economy on the front page of our manifesto, we've, we've delivered that. So actually the record of the Liberal Democrats in government over the last few years has been extremely good. No party, if there is a hung parliament, can guarantee to implement every single one of its pledges. The Conservatives haven't been able to do that. It's on just this one was a signed. This, this one was a. This one was a signed pledge rather than a manifesto promise. Yes, and look, Nick Clegg has said that uh, the party uh, was wrong to make that pledge last time uh, in such a way when we knew actually that Labour and the Conservatives were so fundamentally opposed to it. But we did deliver the vast majority of our manifesto in May 2010. We have very deliberately put on the front page of this manifesto those five key pledges, okay. including the investment in education. Those are our priorities. Right. And you can expect us, if there is a balanced parliament, the Liberal Democrats have influence in that parliament, to deliver on those All five right. priorities. What's the difference between a priority and a pledge? Well, the priorities are a clear indication of the um, most important uh, policies in our, in our manifesto. Those are the ones that we really are committed to uh, delivering in a coalition environment. But obviously we have a huge number of policies in the manifesto that we're publishing today. And it wouldn't be at all sensible for us to uh, preempt the coalition negotiations that could take place when we don't okay. know what the circumstances will be after the next right. uh, election. We don't know the number of MPs each okay. particular party will have, but we're being very, very clear about our priorities okay. and you can expect us to deliver on those. David Laws, thanks very much. Good to be with you. 90 minutes past seven could be the hottest day of the year for some of us, but perhaps not.